Canelo obviously coming off the Eel Dream fight. Uh, I think people want to see him in a, in a in a fight against a dangerous guy on paper. I do think Billy Joe brings that to the table. I, I think he brings uh, you know a certain level of, of skill, a certain level of uh, mental strength to the fight, uh, and he can he can be a bit uh, a he can be the guy who can uh, befuddle opponents a bit. You know, uh, he really impressed me when he went to Montreal and handled Lemieux. Not the fact that he handled Lemieux, but the way he did it. You know, in a, in a tough crowd. Uh, against uh, an aggressive guy, he kind of just took the air out of his tires right away, and just, you know, Blimu never really gained any confidence in the fight, and 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 you know, Billy Joe dominated it in front of the guy's fans. You know, I think that the way he was able to control his emotions in that fight really shows me the uh, the, the pedigree of a champion. Because obviously, we already know he's a he's a he's a skillful guy, but he also has the the ice in his veins, so to speak, to. Uh, to really control his emotions in, in, a, in a big moment pressure situation, you know, which we already know Canelo can do as well. So it's a it's a fight between two top guys and uh, something I really look forward to seeing. What about if uh, Manny Pacquiao does fight Crawford? Yeah, you know, it's they're talking about it. I think Pacquiao's in the rumors for so many fights, you know, it's like every other day there's, there's something new with Pacquiao, right? Uh, there was Ryan Garcia, there was McGregor, now it's, now it's Crawford. Uh, you know, I've heard, I've heard even rumors with Canelo, you know, like, I don't know. Um, I, I think it's hard to pick against Crawford right now, you know, but uh, I don't think there's any shame in, in, in Pacquiao, you know, fighting Crawford and, and, and giving it a, giving it a chance, giving it a shot, you know. Um, personally, I'd like to see Crawford against Spence, as would a lot of people, but personally, I'd also love to see Crawford against even like a Sean Porter, you know, who's a very physical uh, big guy, you know, uh, uh, and, and can really offset a lot of the skill set of, of a skilled fighter, you know. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not excited about the possibility of Crawford and Pacquiao, but but hopefully, you know, these other fights, we get them afterwards. We'll see. It's interesting. You said, like, Garcia called out uh, Pacquiao, but I haven't seen Pacquiao talking about Garcia. Yeah, that was the, there was a, well, I don't, I don't think it was a call out. I think it was more like uh, they were, uh, they were supposed to uh, do an exhibition or something. They were, they were discussing that, you know, I saw some posters on Instagram and it was really being discussed. And then it kind of just faded away, you know, <laughs> a lot of talk, but uh, I don't I don't have a problem with that not happening right now. Um, I think Garcia is a, is a promising guy. Uh, there's a lot of guys in that weight class and that lower, lower weight classes that are young and up and coming and promising. So there's time to, you know, to see guys like Garcia and and and, and such uh, in other fights and uh, other big fights soon. There's another Garcia, Mikey, that I also thought might be fighting him. He got back in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mikey too, that's right, yeah, that's what I mean, Pacquiao's been in so many fight rumors that you forget <laughs> all these guys, you know, yes, I remember hearing Mikey as well uh, was in the rumors to fight, uh, to fight um, uh, Pacquiao, and then I guess it's not gonna happen. De La Hoya also come, coming back to the ring. Trailer. Yeah, yeah, De La Hoya's back, you know, I think there's a, there's sort of a, like you said, there's a, um, there's a, uh, uh, a pocket of, 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 fans that are sort of looking for all these things you know the tyson uh, exhibition came back as well i think there's you know in the era of youtube where you can go find anybody in their prime fighting now you almost curious to see what they would look like fighting you know in person live or whatever you know so there's a whole generation of people that maybe never saw these guys live and now they want to see how they would fight live you know it's not the same guy it's not the same thing to me but I, I can understand the curiosity of it to that degree, you know, especially with the so many ways of marketing and selling them now with uh, these internets and the apps and all kinds of social media. I want to know what's up with Julian, if you can talk like what happened Showtime now. Yes. Um, yeah, there's just a disagreement, you know, um, I, um, you know, I don't, I don't wish bad on anybody, you know, um, and I definitely don't want to disrespect anybody's personal experiences in their life, you know. Um, people have had all their personal experiences, and they have a way to that that those experiences make them feel, you know. Just as I have had experiences in my life, and I have a, they have a way that those experiences make me feel. Um, but uh, when it came to that, I just can't, you know, because I, I also knew black people that didn't feel the way they wanted me to talk, you know, like I, I, it's not just a, not, not all black people that I know that even I know say they feel oppressed. You know, a lot of black people tell me now, don't I want, I don't want you to feel like I'm oppressed. I feel, you know, my, my, my life is good. And, 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 and it's because I, I, I go and get, I'm going get mines, you know? So I, I, I feel like, you know, to make a certain portion of the population happy, you have to say certain things. 
But then you're going to make another portion of the population unhappy. You're still going to be offending some people, whether they be white or black. You know, they're still going to be offending certain black people if you tell them that they're oppressed. You know, there's, a, there's people that as black people that I know that if I tell them they're oppressed, they'll get mad at me. You know, so, so I, you know, I, I, I just found this to be very political more than anything else. You know, that, that was basically my, my, um, my, the way I came off with that, you know, and, and they can... They have the right to make their choices. You know, they're they're an employer, and they have a they have a certain image they want to uphold, and uh, they have a right to uh, to do that. You know, and just as I had the right to make my choices as well. I don't, I don't think I, I think you know there was probably a better way to handle it than there could have been. But you know, I, w- I was promised that we would kind of part ways amicably, um, and that's how it would go, and that we wouldn't really talk about it. But instead. You know, my ex-boss was doing interviews two and three weeks after the after the, we broke apart. I also was told that um, it wasn't going to be public. And the very next day, it was on BoxingScene.com. So I was I would have probably left on a more amicable terms. I, 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 I wish those guys the best, you know, because they're, you know, they gave me an opportunity and they and they allowed me to see that I had a talent in, the, in this business. But but at the same time, um if I told you that I'd ever work with them again, I'd probably have a better chance of bending over and kissing my own ass than ever working for them again. Even if they came up with me with whatever money they came up with me, you know, like I, I, I will never work for any of those guys again, even if they move on to another network, you know, uh, just on the fact that I'm a principle based person. It's not a, it's not even a, an offensive thing. I actually have a lot of respect for them and I think they're knowledgeable guys and they, and they, and they know what they're doing. And, and I think they've got a good thing going there. I really do. They, they I think they continue to sign good fights. Um, that I'm, like I said before, I think the Davis and Barrios fight, I think is a, is a good fight. I think it's Davis's best fight to date so far. I think it's the fight, the Javante Davis that I'm looking most forward to. So I think they're, they're doing good things, but, but um, I think when it comes to matters of principle and ethics, I just didn't uh, appreciate certain things and the way they were handled. And then the, the way that, to me, were lies, you know, like they said that this was the uh, kind of the culmination of a lot of things that I had done and then they had to get rid of me and it was not for one thing. But that was only, they were only saying that because they knew that they would lose in court if I sued them. That was why they would say that, you know? So they said, no, it was not for this. We didn't fire him for his comments. Because if you fire me for those comments, you're going to lose in court 100%. You're going to go to court, you're going to lose, and I'm going to go, you're going to owe me 10 times the amount of money, you know? So instead, my ex-boss being a lawyer went and said, oh no, it was the culmination of a lot of things. You know, he had the situation with Broner back in the day. He was, uh, he was employed by us. He had the situation with Connor when it was back in the day. But here's the thing, when you have a, in a corporate environment, you are warned in writing, you are warned in writing that you, this is a warning that, you know, we can't do this otherwise. Now, don't get me wrong, they were not happy with those things, but they never warned me in writing um, uh, for any of those things. So my job was never, never at risk for any of those things. The Broner situation, when we had the promotion there, the Conor McGregor beef, when we had the promotion there with McGregor and Mayweather. They weren't happy, but my job was never, never at risk. Don't let them fool you into ever thinking my job was ever at risk because they have nothing on paper. They have not a single email warning me that if that continues, I will lose my job. Not a single email. And then all of a sudden, when this other situation happened with my comments about the Devin Haney situation, all of a sudden, we had to part ways. Um, And now they have to cover their ass because, again, like I said, we agreed that we were not going to say anything publicly. It was a, an agreement, you know, like, you know, we were, I, I was on good terms, honestly. When, when we broke apart, that, that phone conversation I had with my ex-boss was, was very pleasant. You know, I say, hey, listen, I understand you have your way, I have my way, and I will totally understand that, and I would always understand that that's the way it works, because I'm, I'm a principle-based person. Um, and I had said that I would not even ever talk bad about them, because, you know, like, the, the, the guys that gave me the opportunities, and to a degree, I have, I, I have still, some of that respect still remains, some of that respect, I lost a lot of it with the way it was handled, though, because I didn't expect, I expected them to handle it the same way I, I meant to handle mine, but um, when I tell you that he gave the interview three weeks after, it was because he had to cover his own ass, because he says he's not going to say anything, and he said the next day, it's on BoxingScene.com, right? So that's the first lie. The second lie is, okay, we're not going to bad, we're not going to bad mouth each other. We're not going to talk about this at all. And two, three weeks later, he's giving interviews with The Athletic. He's giving interviews with Tom Hauser at, at Ring Magazine. So all of a sudden, you've now not held your word two times in a matter of two weeks, you know? So, 
So, and, and I know why. He had to cover his ass. They had to cover their ass because if you don't cover your ass, you're going to lose in court, right? So you have to say, no, we didn't fire you for this. We fired you for the entire eth- eth- scope of things. And possibly, you know what? I probably could have still fought it and done all this. But you know what? It was an election year. It's going to make a big spectacle. I mean, it was a Donald Trump versus Joe Biden election year. If I fought this in court, it was going to make an entirely huge spectacle. You know what? And I've made enough spectacles of myself in my life and my career, you know? So I said, you know what? Let me go off at it and I'll keep it to myself. And that's kind of the way it is. You know, and like I said, I, I still maintain respect for the guy, those guys and the way they do their job. They, I think they have a, a great thing going there. I think they have a, 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 a solid foundation there. They're really smart decision makers with their boxing. Um, Steven is one of the best, uh, I, I think, at that position I've ever seen in my life in, uh, um, in, in, as far as running a network and knowing what fights to put together. So I'll never take that away from them. But at the same time, Ethically, um, they were a very big disappointment. They were a very, very big disappointment, and um, that's pretty much how I can I can end it. And you know, I can go with how I can go with that. I, and like I said, I could have probably still fought it, but not on not on the, the the circumstances, not what was going on last year. You know, you just you can't win that when you're my skin tone. You can't win that argument. You know, it's not 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 in this day and age. So so I, I I'd rather I'd rather have avoided it and just go uh, go my way. And thankfully for me, I've, you know, I've, I've made some smart decisions in my life. So I wasn't in a position to need them or their financing or anything. Um, I could just say, you know what, it has been nice. I appreciate the opportunity and we'll go, you know, um, people can say it how they want it. Was I fired? Possibly. You can say I was fired, but you know what, if I bow down and do what they want, I keep my job, right? So did I choose to leave or did they fire me? I chose not to do that. Remember, I chose not to do that. I chose to say, you know what? Adios. Because I knew saying, not doing what they wanted would mean adios. So who actually left who? You can, you can, and that's just a pride thing. And that's just a, a, a matter of thing. But you know what? Everybody says, oh, you got fired. No, no, no. I got my, if, if I got fired, then I got myself fired because I made my own choices, you know? And like I said, I respect people's uh, experiences and I respect people's, uh, uh, opinions and I respect just the way things happen to people. You always want the best for any kind of people, any, any, any kind of situation, um, individually, especially friends. Um, that was never meant as a disrespect to anybody and anywhere. But if I would have given a different opinion, I still would have been disrespecting a portion of my friends, regardless, uh, uh, black and white, you know? So, so it was either these people are going to be offended this way, or these people were going to offend, be offended this way, one way or the other, there was going to be offended people. So, you, you were never going to win having that conversation. So the best way going forward, I guess, would have been just not having the conversation. Uh, would we see you working with some other network? Um, I think, you know, I keep my options open, but I'll put it to you like this. Um, I gave, there were certain, there were many people that called me but not of the big networks. Um, the Zone, ESPN, obviously Showtime. Um, though Trilla was not around yet, so they don't they don't they don't count in this whole in this whole scope of things because Trilla was not really around yet. They were doing the Tyson Roy Jones fight, but but nobody knew that they were actually going to stick around in boxing yet. So I don't count Trilla in this in this circumstance. But but I do speak fluent Italian, so I did think that. The zone calling me would have been pretty smart because they have a, a, a Italian language broadcast in Italy and they have English English broadcast both in England and the United States. So, I think from a branding perspective, um, I think the zone calling me would have been smart on their part, and it would have been a, a nice marriage together. It would have been better for both of us, you know, uh, because of my my language abilities and obviously my boxing analyst abilities. Um, they didn't call me. Um, ESPN didn't call me, uh, and I gave myself. Just again, because I'm a person of principle, I gave myself until December 31st just to see if anybody touched base with me. Many people touch base with me. All you had to do was touch base with me. If you touch base with me, I will, give, I will let you hang by that string. If you didn't touch base with me, I will never work for you. So any of my ex-bosses at Showtime and Showtime, The Zone or ESPN, I will never work for any of those networks. They knew I was around. They knew where I was. I will never work for any of those networks. Um, I may work. I may get a gig with a promoter or something that maybe does occasionally work with those networks, okay. But I will never specifically deal with those networks uh, um, one-on-one, you know. Um, that, that's kind of this principle-based thing. And, and again, I'm thankful that I don't really have to work if I don't want to. But, you know, it's nice to keep busy and it's nice to have a, a, a schedule where, uh, where you know, you're, 
you're just, you're not just hanging out like you know right now I'm kind of just hanging out you know I went to Italy I'm in Florida I'm kind of just hanging out but we'll see uh we'll see what the future holds I I, ha- I have been in talks with certain other other people um you know even for little gigs that involve in boxing and we'll see whether it's going to be in boxing or something else but again once again I'm thankful that it doesn't have to be something that's like oh my god I, I have to go to work otherwise I'm not going to be able to f- fill my fridge you know L- luckily I'm not in that position and uh, that's where I was most thankful that I had been smart enough to do that. To do that. Yeah, but I personally think you were great, and I know a lot of people loved you. I think for your commentating <laughs> fights, I mean, people yeah. really like, oh, boy. No, I can't. have no doubt. There, there's guys that are good right now. They're out there. You know, they're good. And, and I don't knock anybody who's doing this because I think the guys that are out there and all the networks do a, do a nice job. But I 100% know I'm the best. I, I still watch fights now, and I see things, and I wish I, wish I could – Tell the guy in his ear, like, yo, this is then this right now needs to be said, you know? I, I, I watch fights and, I'll, and, I'll, and I, I wish I could just be in somebody's ear so that they would say it for me, you know? Uh, because I, I, I feel like the viewer always gets a better, a, better, a, a, a better viewing experience if you bring out certain points. Um, so I, I know, I, I mean, I don't need to be, I'm, I'm a humble person, but I, at the same time, I think the fans lose out not having me on TV because... Uh, you're, I'm still going to see what I see, but you're not going to see what I see. And I think if you see what I see, you get a better view. You know, I see what I see. I'm always going to see it. But for me not to be able to share with you what I see, um, then you lose out, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of the way it went, you know, but we'll see. We'll see what the future holds.